Our next statistical graphs are called dot plots, but before we get into dot plots, let's quickly review what we've seen so far with statistical graphs. Recall that the scatter plots reveal relationships between two quantitative variables, x and y. Remember, quantitative as opposed to categorical. These are not categories, these are numbers that represent counts or measurements that we plot on a coordinate graph, x on the horizontal axis, y on the vertical. And they tell us something about a relationship, if there is one, between x and y. The time series graphs reveal trends in a quantitative, again quantitative, a number that represents a count or a measurement, a quantitative variable over time. So our x-axis is time, and then y is our quantitative variable. We're, we're looking to see, is this increasing over time, decreasing over time, what's happening over time? So other graphs, such as dot plots, can provide information about what we call the shape of our quantitative data. And one shape we're particularly interested in is bell-shaped, which indicates a data set that comes from a population that has what we call a normal distribution. We're going to be very interested in this type of data. Now, data that follows a normal distribution is symmetrical. In other words, the left half of the graph is roughly a mirror image of the right half. It doesn't have to be a perfect a graph of symmetry, but if it's kind of close to that, then we tend we will call that a normal distribution. If it's also bell-shaped and symmetrical, then that's um, what we call a normal distribution. Also, these types of graphs can tell us if we have any outliers. Now, an outlier is a sample value that's very far away from the vast majority of the other sample variables. Okay, with that information now, let's look at dot plots. A dot plot is a graph of each data value plotted as a point above a number line. So this is a very simple graph. So here's an example. We have a survey of 19 households in a residential area. And in the survey, one of the questions was, how many working TVs are in the household? So 19 households, here's the, the data in a table. So how many houses, how many households responded that they just have one, or they have no working TVs, zero? Well, one household actually said we don't have any TVs that work in our household, or maybe we just don't have one at all. Um, one TV, Three households said they have just one TV in the, that works in the household. Five households said there were two TVs in the, that are working in the household. So you can see how this table is organized. And all the way to 19. So notice down here, after five, two households said they had five. No household said they had six. No household said they had seven. But one said they had eight. So. We want to, and we want to account for 6 and 7 on our number line. So here's what we mean by the number line. These are all the possible responses. A household could have said 0 or 1 or 2 or 3, etc., up to 8. And now we're going to plot each point. Each dot will be a household. So how many dots go above 0? Well, just one dot. How many dots go above, above 1? there'll be three. So here's what our final graph dot plot would look like. Now what's important when you do these, these are nice and easy to do by hand, especially for small data sets, we just have 19 values, is to try really hard to space your dots so you can see that the, the, um, the response with the most in that uh, response of, for example, of two was our highest response, and it is the tallest stack of dots. But if we smash those down, but we expanded out three, um, those four, it, it might not look like this. So that's one thing you want to be aware of, is trying to space between the dots neatly. So we said that graphs such as this can tell us something about the shape of the data. 
So here's where we see the shape of the data. And no notice that it's somewhat bell-shaped. And by bell-shaped, we mean that it appears that the values start low and rise to a peak approximately in the middle and then descend back down. That's what we mean by bell shape. This isn't a perfect bell shape, but that doesn't matter. We would say our data is approximately normal. Do we see any outliers in this data set? Well, yes, it does appear that we have outliers here on the right. This value of eight TVs in, in that one household appears to be an outlier. So dot plots are graphs that give us some idea about the shape of the data and whether or not we have any outliers in the data.